So this is the uh, worksheet that we ended last Friday's uh, class with, and I wanted to discuss how to add error bars to a particular graph. The data that we had collected was the weights, three replicates of the weight of one candy through five candies, which should be linear. Now, the first thing that we are going to do to make our, our graph look a little bit nicer is to create an average value. And the average value, click and drag, of each th these three. And then double click in the lower right hand corner to add uh, that equation to the rest of the column. And then we are going to add the 95% confidence limit because this is the uh, uh, the value that we are going to use for our error bars. If you remember, if you recall, the 95% confidence limit is plus minus the t value times the standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of samples. t times the standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of samples. We get t in uh, in Excel by typing in TINV. Type in the probability. So if we want the 95% confidence, that's 0 0.05. That's 1 minus 0 0.95. And the degrees of freedom is 2 because we have three samples there, 3 minus 1. Multiply that by the standard deviation. Standard deviation equation is obtained through STDEV. And highlight the three values for which we we're calculating standard deviation, and then divide that by the square root of 3, which is the number of samples that we've got. OK, and we take that number, right click, drag that down. So far, so good. Let's go ahead and select the data for plotting. I use the control key to select multiple data sets. Uh, I'm just clicking the left uh, left hand mouse button, the left mouse button for, th uh, for the first column. And then if I want to highlight another column that is not directly next to it, I press the control key. And now I press left click and drag to get that. Insert, scatter ch chart, no connecting lines. Make this just a little bit smaller make it all fit on the screen, get rid of the series, get rid of that. And if I go left click on the series, go into layout and select error bar options. Notice how it has given me a whole bunch of error bars, both horizontal and vertical. That's the way it's supposed to work. I don't know why, but that's what it uh, what it does intentionally. We can solve the fact that we don't want horizontal bars in just a minute. For the vertical bars, however, we want a custom value. You're going to specify that value for both the positive. It's going to be plus the confidence interval. And for the negative, it's going to be minus the confidence interval. We don't need to. Make sure that that default one doesn't sh doesn't stay in there, and there should be an equal sign in here. There, you don't need to specify a plus or a minus here. Excel will figure it out, and we hit close. Then I'm going to left click on one of the horizontal bars and just click delete to get rid of them. And there we go. We've got our chart. Again, we need chart titles and axes labels, rather. Um, but we've got our standard, uh, our 95% confidence intervals properly uh, displayed. OK, I would like to make one comment about uh, something that's a little different from what I mentioned in class. In class, I said just plot all of this data here instead of plotting an average. And it turns out that if you do that, then the chart does get a little sloppy. So it makes sense uh, to just plot the average plus the 95% confidence interval. 
but it's important that we still did our exercise over here and I will show why that's the case right now. So if I move this, uh, well before I move that chart out of the way, let's right click and add a trend line and see what the equation is. Notice how the equation 0 0.865, 0 0.865, 0 0.051, 0 0.05099. So the equation that we obtain here agrees with the equation with the information we obtained through the uh, line ST command. Except when we take a look at the R squared. The R squared is 0 0.9997 and in the line ST equation the, uh, the R squared is 0.997, only two nines versus three nines. What this is suggesting is that the average data provides a better result than the individual data. Let's take a closer look at what, uh, what's going on here. One way to do that is to perform the line ST on the average data equals line ST. And instead of choosing all of the data like we did for the Ys previously, I'm going to choose the average data and the uh, x's as usual, true, true. Remember, control shift enter. Notice that the slope is the same, the intercept is the same, so that's good. But the standard error in the slope is a little bit lower than it is here. The standard error in the, uh, in the intercept is also lower than it is here. We have a higher R squared, and we have a lower error in, uh, in our Y. So what we're observing is that the average data have, has less error associated with it than the individual measurements. And that, in a sense, makes uh, is, is reasonable because we have already averaged out some of the error by calculating the average of three individual trials. So in this case, what we are doing is perhaps hiding a little bit of the error that is actually associated with the measurement. When we performed the line ST on this, uh, on this set of data, so the average, what we've said is that we may just, what we claim to do is make one measurement at, for each one of these sets of candies and our data turned out to be to fall right on this line. And that is not, not the case. We needed to make three measurements to get this data point. So we're pretending that our data are better than they actually are in this case here. So it is appropriate for us to report this information when, um, uh, when reporting the actual error of our measurements. However, when we're trying to create a graph, it is still okay for us to simply draw the line in our graph using the right-click format trend line or add trend line tool.